You're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What's going on, FA Nation? John and Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Better Baseball MLB DFS Playbook Podcast here. We are previewing Thursday's five-game main slate. Maybe, James, because if you look on DraftKings here, we got a little... Got some rain symbols on the schedule, so uh, we will see whether or not we have five games on this main slate or not. Uh, if we do, though, obviously that will uh, be better official for us because three game slates are hard enough as it is. But of course, uh, we'll be back live five o'clock Eastern to break all that down. This is our first look preview at today's show. Of course, before we break into that, shout out to Real Time Fantasy Sports and go to rtsports.com. Slash alarm, promo code alarm23. New users get a 100% deposit match. Go check out all their DFS pick'em contests and their fantasy football, best ball, and fantasy football championship contest going on right now. You have a chance at a half a million dollars in their fantasy football championship contest. Uh, so go check all of that out right now over at Real Time Fantasy Sports. Uh, James, DraftKings slate. As I mentioned, we got two games with some rain potential. Toronto, Baltimore. Chicago, Pittsburgh, Texas, Minnesota, Oakland in Chicago, and Cincinnati, Arizona are also on this slate. Uh, but we kind of would like to have those games play, um, you know, just for the sake of pitching and player pools. Yeah, I mean, definitely need those games to play. I don't, without a doubt. I'm not, I, we did this three game dance the other, like last week with Adam Wainwright as one of the Terrible. six pitchers. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or nine pit, whatever math. Math is hard. Six pitchers, yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. So let's just get into it here. This is gonna be a quick show, obviously, with just the five games and limited options to talk about here. Uh, we'll discuss it as those games are gonna play. But of course, as we go live throughout the day, five o'clock Eastern, we'll be able to update you on the actual statuses of those games here. But uh, top pitching here: Pablo Lopez at home against Texas. Justin Steele on the road against Pittsburgh. Merrill Kelly at home against Cincinnati. Your three guys up over $9,000. My initial instincts here are to go to Merrill Kelly against Cincinnati. Uh, Pittsburgh has been a bit feisty lately. Brian Hayes homered on Wednesday. Uh, we know that lineup has been heating up a little bit. Uh, and then Lopez with the tough spot against Texas, man. Uh, what are your thoughts on the top three guys? um texas hasn't really been all that great lately so i'd be okay getting to pablo lopez i would say pablo lopez has definitely been in better form than texas's offense has been yeah. um when you look at pablo lopez over his last three starts he has allowed the same amount of earned runs that you and i have allowed sure. in our last uh three starts and that is zero he's won four in a row he's allowed i mean just two earned runs or less and seven straight starts like you know, he's been in really good form. And some of those matchups were not the hardest, but he faced Seattle twice. And Seattle, we, as we know, is surging right. up the, the the standings. He did face that Pit, Pittsburgh offense that you just alluded to. He beat Philly in Philly. Um, Detroit's been better, led by Kerry Barry Bonds Carpenter as well. So, like, I'm okay getting to Pablo Lopez um, here. I, I have no problem getting to them, like, been Corey Seager and then it's been everybody else uh really for for Texas so I like Lopez I'm okay getting to Justin Steele who you know is fairly consistent I mean 15 plus fantasy points in his last six starts two of those have been 23 and 27 and a lot of them are just typically double figures. He's won 14 games and he's won five of his last six starts. That's obviously helped. Yeah. So I'm okay getting to steal. I'm also okay just I think there's a lot of strikeout appeal. And, you know, Mer Merrill Kelly hasn't been a strikeout arm in the past, but three double-digit uh, strikeout outings this year for Merrill Kelly. This feels like one of those potential um, strikeout yeah upside game yeah, for you, Kelly. So I actually like all lineup, three. Super young lineup for Cincinnati now. So yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, if I'm ranking them, it's probably Lopez Kelly steal for me. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, you're not wrong about Lopez current form and obviously Texas. Uh, they're just the most dangerous lineup, I guess, of the three that I would, you know, Seager and, sure. and Adolis and that crew can always pop if you need to get there. Uh, next game down, we have two pitchers pitching against each other in the AK range, Barrios and Gibson. 
You have Heaney going up against Minnesota. We just talked about Minnesota against lefties the other day. Uh, Williamson going up against Arizona. Uh, Jackson against Chicago. Waldesuck against the White Sox. And Schultons against Oakland. Kind of rounds us out here. We have four pitchers under 6K. Are you interested in any of them? Um, yeah, Wal Waldachuk, I think, who hasn't really been bad lately. Um, 18, 12, 19 fantasy points in his last three outings. He had 20 fantasy points against the Giants mixed in, you know, the only bad outing really over his last five has come against the Dodgers. And like, that's okay. Like it's kind of happens against the Dodgers. So yeah, I think Waldachuk at 5,300, the White Sox, you know, should be better here against left-handed pitching, but they're just not, like, a good team. And, as I say that, I look at, uh, during the month of August for the Chicago White Sox, 32.5% oh, yeah. strikeout rate leads the league. They have a 556 team OPS that's 28th. I'm shocked that there's two teams worse, but there is. Um, and a 243 team WOBA, 076 ISO. They're either third to last, second to last, or last in every offensive category against lefties. So, yeah, I think the answer for me is Waldachuk. Uh, and I'll, I'll drop the suck for now because he's I, I believe they've good. been using openers for him, Starts. too. So, like, I think they've had somebody go in for, like, the first inning, get out the top of the lineup, and then let him sort of work his way through the bottom half. And to your point, he has definitely been less suck lately going up against Texas, Washington, and Baltimore uh, right. And you've talked about it, right? Well, he was a, a decent prospect before for them. And it, it just, you know, hasn't obviously worked out uh, to the point yep. this year. But at 5,300, going up against the White Sox, I would uh, adventure to agree with you. We know Arizona certainly had their struggles. Uh, but, you know, Williamson right. has been a guy that we've also liked to target. But a couple of decent stars sure. against Miami and Pittsburgh um, over the last few strikeouts, six or more in four straight. So uh, on a small slate, especially if you end up losing, Toronto, Baltimore, Chicago, Pittsburgh, like you may find yourself just plugging in uh, some of these guys here. Would you touch Berrios, Gibson, or Heaney if you had to pick one? Um, Not Gibson. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say not Gibson because Toronto's been bad against righties. Um, I'm indifferent about all of them. I guess you can make a case as an SP2 for any three of them. I, I would probably rank them as their Rank them as their sure. priced, I guess, because even he coming back from that illness game sucked again. Yeah, I hear you. Um, anybody else? Okay. No. Moving on over then to the infield here. Obviously, we have some top uh, catchers that we can take a look at. We got Jeffers against the lefty, though they've been playing Vasquez when lately, which has been kind of annoying. Yep. Uh, in those spots, you have Adley Garver um, there at the catcher spot. But uh, when you're plugging away at some of these top positions, who's your first go-to? First go to, um, I mean, it's going to sound kind of crazy, but Zach Geloff at 5,700 feels really good going up against Jesse Schultans, um, 415 average, 1200 OPS over his last 10 games for Geloff. So I would say 57 would typically be like something a little out of the ordinary, but, um, something that I'd be willing to get to Bo Bichette being back. He's had a hit in all of his games since returning um, he gets Kyle Gibson, who again has been the definition of inconsistent this year. I like that play. If you aren't playing Berrios, Gunnar Henderson's on one of those, like again, Gunnar Henderson talk about inconsistent is just really good and really bad. And I feel like there hasn't been much in between. And right now we're in really good Gunnar Henderson land. So uh, 5,200 for him. Those are like the three, uh, three infielders that jump off the page right away. Yeah, and you've talked about lefties against Berrios being the, the, the heel for him. Yep. So, uh, Genner, definitely uh, in a good spot. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of you uh, of what you said there. If I was kind of throwing some names out there, uh, you have Planko against Heaney, a guy that I've played a lot lately uh, in lineups uh, as well. You could go Andrews against Walden Truck if you want, if you're not in on him. He's been – uh, was obviously on that nice little streak that he had uh, going on there. And then Ryan, Ryan O'Hearn as well for a value play. Starting to finally cool off slightly. 
but still hitting really well. Uh, another lefty with some power that could go against Berrios. Insane that he's been this good for so long um, because he just was has never been this. But hey, some players figure Every it out. Every time I click on his name, right? I expect to see that like 157, 500 OPS, and it's always like, nope, 300, 850. <laughs> He's just he's just in that ballpark. Uh, anybody else for you? Any other values or anything that you are are targeting? Brandon Belt has been really good lately. Bunch of power coming from him. Um, so him, Longoria is off the IL, and we know Longoria's ability against lefties. So you know, I think Williamson is decent. I also think that there you could play. You know, maybe this is a spark for the Diamondbacks sure. against lefties. Uh, you could also play, uh, where is our boy? Lewis Homer today is 4K. I don't know if you're looking for him or not. But... I'm not. I was looking, I was staying with um, Gabriel Moreno, 2400. Okay. He gets a lefty too. Cool. Um, but yeah, Royce Lewis did Homer, and apparently Corb Burns can't, can't, can't pitch. pitch. Yeah, Corb Burns can't pitch against one of the worst teams in, uh, in baseball. That is... Uh... Second time in a row, he got low, he got lit up by the White Sox, and then he destroyed the Dodgers, and yeah. now it's like, what yep. are we doing? Yep. Um, all right, moving on over then um, to the outfield here. Um, Bellinger against Jackson. I liked Jackson the other day, but you give up the, you know, the homer, kind of ruined a little bit what he had running there. Um, lefties going there against Jackson, give him some problems. Uh, Robert gets the lefty and Walden Chuck. Pick your side in that matchup if you want. Uh, where else are you going at the top, guys? Yeah, I would say Luis Robert is probably my, like, the one pause for concern, yeah. right? Because, like, he's dominant against lefties. Uh, at the top, nothing, nothing? Yeah. I, not Literally nothing. I mean, I don't, I mean, maybe Springer yeah. against Gibson if you're playing Blue Jays. Sure. Mullins has Something. been it's not great since returning, so, like, Probably Springer, other than the names yeah. you mentioned. I, I would probably go to a story if he were to lead off, but he's oh – God, he's been so bad. <laughs> but, like, all he needs to do so is get, get on, on base. base. Like, Just find a – If he does, get on. Yeah, you know? Lord is here at 42. I think is obviously a pretty good mm -hmm. spot for him. Santandro will hit on the left side here. And as we talked about, actually yep. hitting righties a little bit better than lefties. Uh, this season as an option. Fam gets the lefty at, at 39. Yep. Uh, Eloy, you know, just if you're going to play Robert, you probably also just plug Eloy at under 4K. Just feels like it mixes well yep. there. Um, anybody else for you in the mid tier? Um, this is like, I would say it's like bordering mid tier sure. value, but Dalton, I mean, that probably more value, but Dalton Varsho, $3,300 finally like signs of life out of him too. I mean, the Blue Jays got all these guys traded Gabriel Moreno, right? Their top yeah. catching prospect to acquire someone like Varsho who, you know, was multi-position, not now only playing outfield, but uh, was a potential home 30 home run guy for them. Also like probably like 30, 20. And he has not been that. I mean, but it's right. coming around. I mean, three home runs in his last seven games, a bunch of multi-hit games over that span. So I do like Varsho. Depending on you know what version of Kyle Gibson we get, um, Aledmus Diaz is shortstop outfield eligible. He continues to be great. John three run double on uh, Tuesday night for Aledmus Diaz. Just again, like weird to be here in 2023 and suggesting I mean, Aledmus Diaz is like a nightly option, Houston, right? So. Right. right. Um, and then you just get down like. The Twins are going to put Jordan say, Luplo he, in the He's going to hit the time. middle of their lineup. He has been hitting cleanup, yeah. third cleanup, in that range down for them. So uh, he's he unlocks your top spends on slates right now at twenty six hundred bucks. Yep. Yep. And I, I truthfully, I'm okay. Probably. Yeah, Trace Thompson on me today. I don't know about Walter Chuck. Your thoughts on the, he used to be a lefty hitter, and I think like he just sucked in general against everybody. But he did homer today, so. Yeah, I think he's been better against righties this year, but I mean it's worth mentioning. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and build the lineup again. Just five games; it's a quick one. Um, I think we were in agreement that you both liked Kelly, and then you want low. I mean, I'm fine going Lopez. Uh, there wasn't much. 
It's a hammer wall to truck. Hammer it? wall to truck, right? Yeah. It's just it's also about what we can afford. I mean, you play Moreno at twenty four hundred. You play Luplo. If we wanted to, you could play Luplo and Luplo, you have Moreno. Forty two hundred a player. That's pretty right, good. All right. Belt. Could play belt, yeah. Right. Uh, Thirty six hundred. Uh, Cattell or Polanco. Mm. Yeah, Polanco's been really good. Forty eight for him. Third base. You mentioned Longo. It's cheap. Yeah, we could. Yeah, him and and I'm sure him and uh, Moreno are gonna have. If they're not, if they don't hit next to each other, it's gonna be. There's gonna be correlation. Between right. Them. It's right. So Longoria, thirty three, shortstop, could go for Gunner. Yeah, let's get up to Gunner. And then forty two hundred for two outfielders. We definitely had a few guys here. Fam thirty nine. Fam thirty nine. Yep. Uh, and then that gives us a forty fiver. I mean, Whit Merrifield, uh, Lourdes forty two. Just four stack it. Yeah, four stack. Uh, yeah. yeah so we got we got Arizona here, uh, top middle of their lineup going up against uh, against Brandon Williamson. Uh, we got a you know couple of twins. Got a one off Toronto. Uh, and we got two spend ups at pitching here for five games. Slate, hopefully, again, hopefully, you don't get any rainouts, uh, even though we only have exposure to two players in that game. But still, let's get a full five gamer in here for the sake of the slate. James and I will be back at five o'clock Eastern to answer any questions you all have. Of course, you can always find us in the Discord and on Twitter. Go to Jam Pepper 777 on Twitter at the underscore real underscore grande for James. Uh, if you're not yet a fantasy alarm member, go click the code in the description or scan the QR code here on the screen. Uh, if you come an all pro member, get access to our fantasy alarm playbook, uh, DFS playbook content, get access to our premium discord channels where you can find James and I giving you your live draft, uh, live lineup advice each day here, uh, get access through all of our DFS content, not just baseball as well. Football seasons here. You got a free copy of the fantasy football draft guide and fantasy football cheat sheet when you sign up. Oh yeah. It also comes with a seven day free trial. So if you don't like it after seven days, cancel it, no charge to you. So, Risk-free opportunity here to become a member of the Fantasy Alarm family. James and I will be back a little bit later on today, everybody. Good luck in your afternoon. I don't even know if there are afternoon games. If there are afternoon games, good luck. We'll catch you all later.